Cloud Case Study 2 by Ibtisam Mahmood, Yassine Olafiz, Liam Bilby, and Liam Cook. So to get started with the project, we worked on the GCP console. And so GCP provides us a cloud shell, which has an existing Linux system that we can use so that the development environment and the deployment environment are mirrored. This would save us some installation steps as well when working with the development environment. So to get started with the development environment, we needed to install Java and Maven. So since we were working on the GCP shell, Java was already installed, but we needed to install Maven through the app tool. So we did that by first updating the app tool and then installing Maven through the app tool and then verifying the installation by checking the version of Maven. After that was done, to migrate InBlue onto, uh, onto Google Cloud, we started off by importing a starter spring project with the following dependencies, web, cloud GCP, Thymeleaf, and data GPA. This would give us a starting place for importing the project files from InBlue so that we could get the deployment onto GCP. After that was done, we imported the InBlue version one from GitHub and uh, cloned it into the local development place. So with the version one imported, we copied over the main controller Java file, the customer repository Java file, and the customer Java file into the starter spring project to enable it with the source code. And then we also copied over all the HTML views within the resource templates folder. With this done, we actually had to import some libraries into the project. This was done through the Maven tool and the pom.xml file. The pom.xml file is a dependency specification for InBlue that contains all the relevant information for Maven to use while compiling the project and points out any dependencies that the project is dependent on. And so we added in the Thymeleaf and Bootstrap dependencies into this to enable the project with the source code. So to deploy the project, we we're going to use App Engine. So we so App Engine is a platform as a service, and it manages the deployment and scaling with the with little management of the actual infrastructure of the application. And so this way, popular popular programming languages are are supported with effortless orchestration. And this would be ideal for us to deploy the InBlue project onto. So to first we had to first we had to enable the App Engine Java API. And so this command was run within the Cloud Shell to enable that. After that was done, we moved on to the Google Cloud console to create our first project with App Engine. And so we set the zone to North America Northeast One, which is located in Montreal, and it would be the closest to our users. After that was done, we had to enable our project with App Engine. And so this was done by adding the following lines to the pom.xml under the plugin section. And so this would enable our application to use App Engine as a dependency. So after that, we actually had to add a new file under the source main web inf directory. And it was called the app engine web XML file. And this is a specification for App Engine to use when building and deploying the, the project. Uh, the version for this was the first version and it uses Java 8 to compile. So after App Engine was configured, Cloud SQL was needed so that we could store the data for the application on Google Cloud. Cloud SQL is a platform as a service and it hosts databases with minimal effort. And it allows us to scale and connect our databases without managing the instances underneath them. So to work with Cloud SQL, we actually have to enable the Compute Engine API because Cloud SQL uses that. And so we did this through the Google Cloud Console and enabled the API. Once this was done, we went to go provision an instance for Cloud SQL and we set the following fields for it by setting the MySQL database type and then setting the instance to Cloud Case 2 and setting the region to North America Northeast 1 region, which was in close proximity to our App Engine service. Finally, we created a root user with, that was generated with admin privileges. After the instance was hosted successfully, we created a database on that instance that would be acting as the primary database for InBlue. This database was called Case Study. So to configure our database so that it could be accessed from our application, we had to allow 0.0.0.0 uh, slash 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0, 
network, which would allow anywhere to access this uh, database with the right privileges. After the SQL instance in the database was set up, we had to import the dependency for Cloud SQL onto the InBlue project. And so this was done by setting this uh, dependency in the Palmda XML, XML. And we actually had to add a version for this, uh, which was not previously mentioned. It was version 1.2.7.release. So after this was done, Spring basically uses these keys within the application uh, within the application uh, properties file, and this is going to be used to connect to the MySQL instance using the following inputs. And so you put in the username, and then we put in the password. And we put in the database name, and we we specify the instance connection name using the following like string case study two dash the ID for the case study and then the region for it and then the instance name. So after this was run, we basically had to enable the SQL admin Google APIs plugin onto our console. And so this was done by running this command on our console. Afterwards, to uh, for our application to successfully locally access the SQL instance, we actually had to use service accounts. And so service accounts are a way for your application to identify access to another service within GCP. And so we went onto the IAM service within the Google Cloud Console, and we generated a key.json file. And this was downloaded and then imported onto our project. After it was imported, we exported a local variable within the within the console. And so this was set to the location of the key.json in relative to the application. And we verified this by echoing out the echoing out the the, the variable. Yeah, from here we were able to kind of build our application using the Maven clean install command. And then the Maven and app engine run command was used to compile to run the compiled version of the application. However, we ran into two problems. The first problem we ran into while doing this was a build error within the app engine. The problem was found on the app engine web XML file to specify the usage of HTTP over HTTPS. And upon replacing this property, this, the project could be successfully built. The next problem we ran into was a runtime error. Upon running the application, the server would successfully start. However, when connecting to the application, it would respond with a 503 error. The MVN app engine run dash x command was run for a more detailed log output. It was then discovered that the key.json for the service account authentication was not found by the app. Therefore, it is not able to connect to the SQL instance. This was fixed by correcting the referencing within the for the key dot key.json file. Upon fixing the two issues, the application successfully worked locally on the dev app server. Therefore, the next step was to deploy it to the app engine. The following command was used to deploy the first version of InBlue to app engine. This successfully generated a link for us within the with the InBlue hosted. The next stage of deployment required us to update the project to the next version. This was done simply by entering the GitHub project and checking out the v2 branch. Next, the following files were copied over from the InBlue project version 1 in order to change it to version 2. This was then tested locally with the Maven tool app and then deployed to the app engine using the following command. The final step to deploying InBlue required us to update the project to version 3. The same steps were followed to upgrade the project similar to v2 uh, which existed on the GitHub v3 branch. And then in blue was then deployed using the following command, mvn app engine deploy with the project in version following. Updating to version 3, we were now set to split the traffic between the two versions, version 2 and version 3. We use the following command to split the traffic 50-50 between the two websites. We will now demo our application on GCP. Going to the Google Cloud Platform, 
and opening up the versions inside the app engine, we can see that version B, which is the second version, or V2, and version 3, or 1C, are both hosted on 50% of the services. Opening up the SQL database, we can see that the SQL database is functioning and working properly, connected to the websites to host the databases. Inside I am an admin, we can go to service accounts to see that our app engine default service account is green and that we have our key over here. Finally, returning to our versions inside the app engine, we can see each of these versions are still online with their consecutive loading order here, with version 1 having no information filled out because it is not connected to the SQL instance, while version 2 has information along with payment methods filled in on the right side. And version 3 has phone codes also filled in. And so we can see the three different versions hosted here with the Google Cloud Platform splitting traffic between these two websites 50-50. Thank you for listening to our video. This is the conclusion of our presentation and how we have managed to complete the second case study hosting two versions of a website and splitting the traffic 50-50. Thank you.